Hi guys and welcome back to Rebellious Menstruation. This video is going to be about hiking. Um, I guess some of these principles would apply to camping as well, um, even though I'm not a very big camper. Um, so while on your uh, menstrual cycle, um, this can make uh, through hiking a little bit more compl complicated, um, especially with hygiene, cleanliness and maintaining a bacteria-free environment. Um, some things can be quite obvious, um, like take pain meds, drink plenty of water, wear comfortable shoes and pants and clothing. Um, others can have more complications like washing your hands before and after uh, changing your menstrual cup, um, or, or just washing before and after every use, no matter what the product in an environment that can have limited or contaminated water. Um, so the obvious options for hiking are cloth pads, menstrual cups, disposable pads, tampons, underwear, sea sp and sea sponges. However, an adequate level of washing needs to occur for every time you change one of these products, especially, especially or in particularly with internal protection. There is also a weight concern when carrying in and out of hiking, as one should always follow the leave no trace principles. Um, so just as an FYI, the leave no trace principles basically dictate that you should leave what you find, minimise the effect, your effect on your surrounds, wildlife and obey all fire restrictions, which I come from Australia, which is basically, we have very... Uh, strong fire restrictions because at, at least once a year one part of the country is on fire um, so most of these issues can be dealt with by planning and preparing uh, this principle is my um, main argument against using tampons and pads um, because you um, you know the leave no trace principle I think needs to apply to life <laughs> not just for uh, a hike. Um, so even though you may be carrying out your tampons and pads, um, you're only going to litter them elsewhere. So you, if you're going to go put them in a waste receptacle or in a bin or in your household waste, that's going to landfill. So it's actually not leaving no trace. You are definitely leaving a trace. It's just not necessarily on the hike. It's in landfill. Um, and this is also... Um, which I'll cover off probably in another video. <laughs> um, this is also my issue with the use of smart water bottles on the trail. It seems very popular on YouTube at the moment to use a filtration system with smart water bottles because smart water bottles are very, very light and, I quote, easily replaceable at your local shop. And um, so this is, like, I just kind of find this kind of appalling. I mean, I'm a very inexperienced hiker at this point, and I do understand the arguments for going lighter or using lighter material, but intentionally using plastic is really, really abhorrent when you're out in nature and promoting, you know, hiking in nature. Like, that's... I don't understand that. So, obviously... um I leaned more towards the menstrual cup as it is reusable and lightweight. It also eliminates the need for plastic ziplocks, uh, which is where you'd put tampon waste and pad waste. And it would also um, kind of cover off the weight issues that you would have if you were carrying in and out uh, tampon and pad waste. Um, so but like this would also apply to these type of cloth pads here is that even if you carried them in you would still need to carry them back out and then you would need to wash them um the major con is that the access to soap water and the ability to practice safe and hygienic washing practices when using and removing internal protection can be sometimes quite hard um this obviously also applies to sponge use and tampons. Um, as mentioned previously, tampons will also have to take up extra room in your pack and you'll need to carry them both in and out, um, which obviously increases your pack weight. Um, 
in Australia we don't actually use applicator tampons, so we don't really have to. We, so we don't really have that issue, particularly with carrying the extra weight of the plastic and then having to carry out the plastic applicator. Um, but however, it is a significant plastic waste and waste issue for Americans. Um, applicators also add extra weight, take up more room, uh, contribute more to environmental waste. So while hand sanitizer, um, I do have some hand sanitizer here, um, is mostly recommended on hiking trips to maintain hygiene. There are issues with negative reactions with the menstrual cup. So really um, your hand sanitizer here should not be coming into contact with the silicon in your menstrual cup. Um, and also this would have a negative interaction with the plastic um, with the plastic in your uh, applicator in, on the on the plastic in your applicators as well. So uh, this also will cause um, or just and just in general, not uh, personally, this hand sign hand sanitizer personally, but it will definitely um, interact. Uh, with your labia and vaginal wall and vulva um, and it will cause irritation and quite often rashes as well um, and it's actually really not this this hand sanitizer is definitely not made to be part of uh, your like to be in contact with intimate areas of your body so if you're putting this on your hands to sanitize them and then removing your tampon or menstrual cup or sea sponge and then putting like cleaning it off washing it off and then putting a new one back in or putting the washed off product back in this is not meant to be in uh, contact with either your menstrual cup or your vagina or vulva so I mean there's issues with that as well um, so this may this is not the best option to contain bacteria and hygiene if you don't have access to uh, washing your hands before and after removal and insertion. There are also um, pre-moistened wipes, so essentially baby wipes that are an option. However, even if they are unscented or made for cleaning cups, this may not remove the bacteria um, or be as hygienic as simply washing in soap and water. Uh, and also using these pre-moistened wipes is not always recommended by the manufacturers of cups because it damages them. Uh, it is very important to remember that if you elect to use tampons, do not ever bury them. Um, it is always important to remember that you need to carry them out and dispose of them in the nearest town or waste receptacle. Um, also, do not burn them in a fire because the toxic chemicals in tampons can cause other issues. Um, so also this would apply to hand sanitizer and the wipes is always pack them in and out because no matter what the wipes say they are definitely not biodegradable and shouldn't be left out on the trail. Um, I have hiked um, and I've hiked part of the Cape to Cape um, which is in Western Australia um, and I plan to use or rather I did use a menstrual cup um, because it can be left in for the 12 hours, it can be left in for the entire day, which is what I really, really liked about it. Um, so it's kind of, for me, I thought at the time it was perfect for a day hike or a through hike. Um, however, the camping facilities were really, really, really substandard. Um, you could only camp in certain areas along the trail. Um, they had contaminated water, um, which meant I couldn't really clean either my hands or my menstrual cup adequately enough to change it out for night use um, and so like the the hygiene was literally non-existent uh, at the camping site um, and this actually happens in general in Australia that the outback has a severe lack of facilities and hygienic places to stop um, and I was seriously concerned about my uh, capacity to maintain maintain hygiene um, even on the basic withdraw cup wash cup and insert cup back in principles um, 
and again while there is hand sanitizer um, this is not a good option to have when changing out your cup because you shouldn't have it as I've mentioned near your cup you shouldn't have it um, near your vulva or vagina and you should um, always attempt at least to use water um, However, to use any of the water that we had access to, we'd need to boil it for five minutes to get any of the bacteria out. Um, and uh, it's really hard in the type of environment that we were in because when we hiked, it was a total fire ban. Um, Western Australia has a total fire ban from December 1st to March 1st. Um, so... Um, I'm not particularly interested in using any type of external protection like cloth pads um, and this is because there are weight issues in carrying them. Um, there are also um, issues with obviously wearing them and work, walking for, 12, um, for 8 to 12 hours a day. Um, there's also having to clean them so I'd have to store them in like a wet bag and then have them in my bag which in and of itself isn't a problem because I usually do that um, if I'm outside of my house. However, I then have to clean them in hostel or hotel facilities because I would not have regular access um, to a facility to do that in. Um, and there were also issues with the frequency of which to change um, and... I have a really heavy second or third day. I possibly have mentioned before that I lose about two-thirds of my menstrual blood in one day, um, which is generally my second. Um, so while I'll be doing further testing because I want to hike the Bibliman next year, which is why potentially this uh, kind of camping or hiking series will be a series of videos, but... Um, I, so I prefer to use either a cup or cloth um, because I don't want to use tampons because of the way they are um, and they also in an unhygienic environment such as hiking uh, they're more likely to promote bacteria growth uh, and unhygienic conditions and therefore promote bacteria growth um, and also I don't want to use pads uh, pretty much for the same reason they're heavier to carry in and out and they are sweaty, cause rashes, and I get contact dermatitis from them. Um, but I'm just still not sure how to maintain a safe wash, removal, wash, insert procedure with the cup, um, without safe access to water, and without using harsh chemicals like a hand sanitizer. A hand sanitizer. If any of you guys have any suggestions, please add them below or email me or tweet me. Um, I do take, when I go hiking, this soap. Um, which is this uh, Dr. Bronner's unscented um, hemp, maybe unscented pure Castile soap. So I can use something like this to um, wash stuff up. Uh, so like this is maybe the solution, but I still have obviously water-based issues. Um, outside of that, that's where I'm at at the moment um, in the journey so uh, this is my first video on camping um, so maybe you guys have some some suggestions uh, anyway thanks for that and I'll catch up with you guys soon bye